Welcome to part 7 of our tiny home design series using Revit 2025 as a tutorial for civil engineering and architecture. In this video we're going to take a look at how to create renderings, create some custom 3D views using cameras, and also look at creating a walkthrough for our structure. So to start off first is I'm going to go ahead and if we're on the architecture tab we're going to go ahead and move to the view tab and we can go ahead and create something known as a render. So a render is a photorealistic image of a building model that we can use for various purposes. A lot of times for um, nice views to be placed on outside of a sign maybe of a new building being constructed or even for a presentation. So a few things that we'll take a look at is that we do have the render button here at the top in the setting. We do have a region section. Notice the region section is outlined in red here. I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to actually zoom in here and kind of get most of our what we want to render here and I'm going to check that box and as I zoom out I can actually have the rendering box that I can resize as I need to show what I would like to see inside of that rendering. So I'm going to do something along the lines of this. By default you're usually set with a draft setting. I'm going to change to medium. Medium works pretty well just keep in mind the higher the quality setting the longer it's going to take to render. You have the resolution set to the screen which is usually pretty good. You can also set that to a printer if you have a different type of uh, setup. And then you have the lighting scheme which right now we're only going to set to exterior sun only. You have some other options whether it be sun and artificial. Artificial lighting means that those are like actual lights, artificial lights. Or are you only going to go with artificial only and you also have the op same options for interior. For this one we're going to stay with exterior sun only and we'll see some of those different options in another part here in a second. The sun setting we'll leave as in session and the background you have a few options. I usually choose sky, few clouds or you can choose another option such as color or image or you want to make it transparent. So you can always kind of play around and see what kind of options work best. As far as image, adjusting the exposure can happen after we do our rendering and then some other options will come available once I go up here and I select render. So a progress bar will show up to show the rendering progress and you'll see here in a moment we will get a full rendering of our project. Shadows and everything being included in the sun setting. Notice on the inside through the window it is dark on the inside. That's that artificial light not being used in our rendering but that's going to be the rendering that we have. We can adjust the exposure, some of the things like highlights, exposure value, as well as saturation and shadows. You can always play around with some of these to see, you know, do we want this to be brighter, do we want it to be darker. I usually kind of leave these at default, so I'll select cancel. And either one of two things, we can save this to the project or we can always export. So I'm going to go ahead and select save to, save to project. I'm going to name this exterior tiny house and select OK. If you wish to export it you can export out as an image and use it in like some presentations or any other kind of media that you're going to use. I'll close this menu when I do so and I come back to this that uh, our model will reappear. You'll see that my renderings now show up. I do have a rendering section, usually look like this with a plus sign. I have to click it. I did have a previous rendering I tried earlier, and then here's the one that we just did. I like the second one a lot, so if there's ever a case where you don't like one, I'm going to go ahead and delete this first one that I did from earlier. But here is the tiny house render that we have going on and be able to use that. Tiny house exterior. So, either one. I'm going to go through and utilize for our documentation later. I'm going to go ahead and move to our floor plan. 01 floor plan, this is what this looks like. The uh, floor plan itself, the outside of this is the topo solid, so representing our site. And you can see the elevation markers are in here as well. What we can do is we can also establish, if I go stay on the view tab and go to 3D view, click the drop down on 3D view, I can either go to 3D default 3D view or I can use camera and camera allows us to create some custom 3D views in our project. So you can also find this same thing up here in the little sh quick access shortcut menu. Select the drop down arrow and select camera. 
both options will give you the same exact result. So I'm gonna go ahead and go across the road here, so to speak. I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna go ahead and move my lines out to see uh, what's kind of in range of what the camera sees. This is gonna be a perspective view. Notice the offset is set to five foot six. So maybe if I wanna change the height of that to five foot eight. So that's about how far the camera is off from the floor. So if you think about a person that is five foot eight inches tall, that's gonna be what how they see what we're gonna see with this camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to place. And now here is what's gonna create our, our view. And I can always open and expand this a little bit more to get more in the view. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's just go ahead and open this up just a little bit more. Create a little bit more of a, of a realistic approach. So one thing I can do is down in my view settings is I can set the default level to from coarse, medium, or to fine. I usually like fine. And then for the type, I can either go to shaded, I can select consistent colors, or uh, usually everyone's favorite is realistic. And so here's the realistic setting as we look at some of the, the structure and everything. And what I can do here is I can also render this image. So again, I can go ahead, rather than I can select a region, but it's gonna pick up this outside border. So I'm actually gonna leave that turned off, go to medium, maybe exterior sun only and maybe sky maybe uh, cloudy and then go ahead and select render our progress progress bar will appear and there's what our view kind of looks like of our of what we have going on with the camera view if i like it i can save it to the project or export if i want to show the model i can just toggle this and if i want to show the rendering i can do that as well i'm just going to go ahead and close this and I'm gonna move back to my floor plan. The other thing you can do with camera views, I'm gonna zoom in here, is I can actually, you're gonna notice you're gonna see the contour lines come in from your topo solid. So one thing you can do is if you don't wanna see the topo line show up as one, you could hide the topo solid um, as you're going through this view, which is something that might, might be interesting to do, or you can hide the contour lines. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and keep these in here and I'm gonna focus on inside of my floor plan. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a camera on the inside of my structure here. And I'm gonna click when I get outside, outside the view here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and expand my view. And we're gonna be able to see what, what this kind of looks like. Okay, same kind of thing. I can always change my appearance to realistic. There's what it looks like realistic in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click off of that. We can render. This one here, we're gonna go with exterior sun only. I wanna show you just some of the settings. So when I select render, you're gonna see it's gonna get really dark inside of this particular um, particular case because we're only pulling in the exterior sun so if I go in here and and say show the model I'm going to change my lighting scheme to interior uh, sun and artificial and select rendering or select render I should say to start the rendering and here you're gonna see it's gonna be a lot brighter it's gonna pull in some of that interior lighting and things as, as such so Again, the color, the lighting scheme is going to help quite a bit. Another thing we can do, which is pretty neat, is I'm going to actually go back to that floor plan view. I'm going to go into the insert tab, and I'm going to choose Lot Autodesk Family. I'm going to find the lighting category, and what I'm looking for is something called a studio light. And the second one here is what we want: studio light. If I select it and say load. And if I go now into architecture and go to component, I can choose studio light at 120 volts or 227. All that this is is really just a ball of light because you can see like it's kind of dark back in these areas and you're gonna notice that it says that none of those elements are shown. So I'm actually just gonna click and place in a few spots. Doesn't look like anything happens, but let's go ahead and go back to that, to that camera view. So if I go to my 3D view section in my project browser, 
3D View 2 will show me that. And here you can see those studio lights show up. And what that is, is that's just a ball of light that they use to kind of, if you don't have any lights, to kind of put on the interior. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the View tab. Let's render. Let's go ahead and render what we've got here. And what you're going to see is it's a lot brighter back here now. In fact, you even see a little bit of a warm spot on the wall back there of where the light is really kind of come in and everything as such. So the reason why we get the errors is that those, those lights kind of show up more up toward the ceiling, up toward the top of our roof, uh, coming in on the inside edge there. And that's why we kind of see that kind of saying, hey, well, you're outside of the view for being able to see those things. So if I close the rendering dialog, I can actually select these two and delete them. And let's go ahead and render once more so that way you can kind of see the effect. And you're going to see that that back corner is going to not be quite as illuminated as what it was. So you can see you're not going to have that warm spot on the wall and it's a little bit darker. So it depends on one of those things. You can use those, but also the more lights you add in, uh, which is something we'll explore later on in the course. When you add some lights into your structure, the lights will automatically have a, a lighting setting that will illuminate some of those dark areas of your, of your structure. So just wanted to show you a few of those things in case you get in there and that looks really dark. That's uh, something you can throw in, some of that studio light to try to brighten up the space and make it look uh, really neat without having to add in a bunch of, of lighting fixtures. The last thing we'll do is we're going to go ahead and move to the floor plan and I'm going to show you how to create a walkthrough. So on the view tab I'll click on 3D view and on the drop down I'll select walkthrough. What this looks like again is you take a look through the settings. We're going to have a perspective view. We're going to go ahead and offset a 5 foot 6. So maybe I can change that to 5 foot 8. I'll usually just kind of go with a little bit of an average. Not for any particular reason. Just want to show you the setting change. And then from the floor. And what you're going to do is we're going to start over here across the road. And it's like placing a series of cameras. So there's the first place where we start. And I'm going to create a trail. And you can kind of see it's going to go into the building. Walk around. And I'm going to stop right here in front of the, of the television. When I get it done, I'm going to go ahead and right click and say cancel. You can see here's our our path that it's going to follow. The three rays always indicate our direction, our view. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here and select edit walkthrough. Now at the very end, you're going to see the camera is all the way at the very end. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say you have previous frame or previous keyframe. So the red dots are the keyframes. It'll jump to these increments, whereas a previous frame, notice the camera movement is only at small increments. If I go previous keyframe, it jumps to that red dot. So I'm gonna keep doing the previous keyframe until I get all the way back here at the very beginning. And then what I can do is I can go and say play, and you can see it's gonna walk through at this rate and kind of looking at the view. So in order to see it, I gotta select the open walkthrough option and then click the play button. And you're going to be able to see there's kind of the keyframe. And if I need to expand and open this up a little bit more, then I can go ahead and see that. So I'm going to go ahead and select play. Here's our walkthrough. And it goes a little bit fast. So as we walk, through, do go through the walkthrough. And some of that could be uh, edited by adding more steps in there. I kind of clicked and only added a few cameras more cameras you add in, the longer it's going to kind of play through and edit the walkthrough. So once I have this done, I can go ahead and select cancel. Just a neat little, little functionality. If I go down, so if I go move back to my floor plan and if I was to close this out, you'll find it down here in your project browser under walkthroughs. I can right click on it or I can open it up. And then what you'd actually have to do is right click on it and uh, be able to see like what are some of the options that you have available. So like here on your walkthrough, um, you can always go in and take a look at some of those settings. So but that's a little bit with the walkthrough setup as far as being able to, to work with that and as far as being able to, to do some of that. So in order to uh, get it to open up again, I do have to select the outside boundary. There's that edit walkthrough option. There's the open and play and I can get it to replay once more. So, 
All right. So again, play around with some of those settings, see what it's like to create a walkthrough, and uh, you will be able to see what kind of control and what neat kind of renderings and visualization you can come up with as you play around with Revit 2025. As a final note on walkthroughs, I just want to go ahead and show you when you open up a walkthrough, uh, in order to edit the walkthrough, you have to select the outside boundary. You have to edit walkthrough. And in order to slow down or change some of the settings for your walkthrough, notice how, how many frame settings we have. If I click on this box, right now I've changed this. The default is 300. I've went ahead and changed this to 1,000. And this will show you what keyframes you have. I've got seven keyframes in here. We're going at, uh, we have a total time uniform speed at 15 frames per second. So if I, now that I've changed this, I can go ahead and say edit walkthrough. And what I can, and after I've changed this, again, selecting OK, is, nope, we don't want to quit editing the walkthrough. So, but right now I'm going to go ahead and say cancel. Here we go edit walkthrough now let's go ahead and select play and you can see we go a little bit slower I can even change the uh, once it gets done running through the walkthrough I can even change the appearance here in a moment but again opening up that box and seeing that uh, setting I can also go to realistic I can go ahead and select play now again the realistic setting is going to slow this down quite a bit because it's trying to process all the graphics so if we need to, one issue with that is that we have to let the walkthrough play. So that's one thing that we want to kind of show is that, hey, that can be a little bit problematic. It's moving quite slowly as it goes through that walkthrough. So you might want to be careful on, you know, what kind of settings and everything that you have working through how fast your computer goes. If I go down here, here is the percentage bar. If I select cancel, so I should be able to hopefully it will close out here in a second but it does take a while you can see my uh, cursor just kind of keeps spinning there so um, as we're kind of moving through at a snail's pace through the walkthrough so just want to caution you some against some of that so as you're kind of seeing some of those things and it looks like it's just going to continue to go through that walkthrough but again just uh, know what limits your your machine has and also being able to do some of the different items very awesome very cool to do a walkthrough however it can be a little intensive especially as it is um, trying to process all the graphics so again have fun play around with it and see what kind of stuff you can create